Hey there, Eric here, and uh, we're here in my basement, which also happens to be my home studio. And uh, I've been watching a lot of videos by uh, Gavin Hoey, and he's been talking about how to use lighting um, in your small studio uh, to come up with neat effects. And um, then I happened to order um, this set of gels that go on uh, speed light cameras. Uh, and after seeing some of his uh, ideas on how you can use that to affect the mood, I decided, hey, I'm gonna try one of those shots. And so uh, I'm gonna do a little experimentation, see what works, and um, so I'm gonna be using a white background. That's not the best choice. Um, so he recommends gray. Gray really takes um, colors very well. Um, black and white are not exactly perfect. He said uh, white will make it more pastel, and I guess black would also make it darker. But we'll see what we can do. I don't happen to have a gray background at the moment. And uh, so I'm gonna show you my equipment. Then I'll, I'll show you the setup that I have. I'm not gonna tape while I'm, taking the, the, um, while I'm taking the photos because my other uh, Canon uh, DSLR does not have a window, so it's a lot harder to aim and I don't really wanna waste a lot of time going back and forth and back and forth with the aim. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. So here I have my background, uh, two of my light stands, now, um, I don't know if I'm going to need uh, the grid, but I have it there just in case. And so since I have the grid, I'm gonna be using my 430 speed light because I don't have a grid uh, adapter for the 580. And there are my mono lights over there. And I have a Cowboy Studio trigger that's gonna trigger all the lights. So uh, yeah, let me get everything set up and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so here's my setup. I want my key light to be from above. Um, a softbox would be better for this than an umbrella, but uh, softboxes take a lot longer to set up. So I'm gonna try to do kind of a diagonal lighting. So this one's kind of coming from above. That one's meant to come from below on the left. And so um, Gavin usually has you get your, which is a good technique, get your key light well first. Then after your key light works, then you want to um, work on getting your fill and then you can worry about your background. So let me go ahead and work on that. So, all right, all right, so now that uh, I'm pretty happy with the regular exposure, I've put a flash that's gonna be right behind me. I have the red gel on it, and uh, we're gonna just see how that comes out. Right now I have it set to one over 64 speed, and um, I'll just go increasing it uh, as necessary after I review the photos. <laughs> all right, so I'm back upstairs in the office, and I took a look at the photos, and um, as you can see, Gavin Hoy was quite right. If you're using a white background, you will make your colors turn pastel. Um, I chose the darkest red that I had in my gel kit. And as you can see in the picture, I have pink behind me, not red. So um, yeah, there's that. Now there's one other thing that um, disappoints me about this photo. And that's that um, the, the pink, fine, it's pink is not covering as much of the background as I wanted. You know, if you look at Gavin Hoey's um, video, you can see that um, the entire background behind the woman is purple. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's a couple things. Uh, first of all, um, although it looks like Gavin is using speed lights, he's actually using um, a, a flash that's as powerful as a monolight in the body of a speed light. So I thought, well, first of all, there's the possibility that my speed light just isn't um, strong enough to dominate the, the background. I also thought about where I put it and a couple other issues. <coughs> As I mentioned, uh, you know, when I did the shooting, um, I was using umbrellas, which I had a feeling, an intuition, would not be ideal. But I wanted to use them because I only had a certain amount of time to do it and um, it'd be a lot faster to set up than putting together my softbox. Now, as you can see from this image, the entire room is lit up. It's not just me and the background. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the light from the umbrellas is going everywhere, as they do. Umbrellas tend to throw light everywhere, but you can see that it's kind of undoing 
the fact that I'm using Flash. Uh, well, uh, let me rephrase that. The Flash is acting as the main light, yes, but it's lighting up the entire room. Part of that has to do with the fact that uh, my basement has low ceilings and it's not very wide. Uh, so the light is, I, I, I was shooting light in two directions, but it was also going front and back and everywhere. And so there's quite a strong possibility that the speed light would have added more light to the background, but for the fact that the umbrellas were washing it out a bit. And actually in the video that most inspired me to do this, I mean, Gavin does it in a few videos, but the one that most inspired me, um, he's using a grid on his softbox to make sure that the light is directed, to make sure even the softbox doesn't spill light. So what, what are my next steps? So what I wanna do, I'm gonna leave the background white because even though a black background would probably be better, gray is best, and I don't wanna introduce more variables. I wanna just see with a white background. So what I wanna do is take the white background and shoot the flash against it without, I shoot the speed light on it without any of my mono lights. If it covers much more of the, um, of the background, then I know that it was the umbrellas washing it out. And it's gonna be tricky putting it in the exact same spot because I had to tear, um, you know, put away all my stuff uh, yesterday when I did the shoot because um, that's where my mother-in-law um, sleeps and that's where the kids play and so I can't just leave my equipment up. But I'm gonna to try to get in a roughly the same spot and see, you know. And then from there, I can kind of play around a little bit. Um, I did ask for advice on Reddit, on the S Photography subreddit and um, most of the advice was in line with what I thought. They said, well, it's probably your umbrellas spilling light um, and um, you're gonna have to just kind of play with it a bit. I did get one bit of advice from someone who said for a full body shot, it usually takes them four speed lights. I just had one. I have another speed light, but I don't have another gel kit and I don't wanna have some weird like red over here, blue over here, purple in the middle. Although that could be cool potentially, but I'm trying to just see if I can get just one light in the background. The other, the other big suggestion I got was um, try a longer lens and see if that will kind of make it so that you're looking right behind, you know, the subject and maybe that'll work a little better. Uh, my sister-in-law is going to be in town, so maybe I'll have a chance to try it out with her because uh, long lens makes it a lot harder for me to take a picture of myself. Um, you know, even with the screen that the Canon T6S has, uh, it's going to be pretty far away. I mean, I'll be able to tell if my head's in it, but but uh, it might it might be a little more frustrating than it's worth versus using someone else as a model. So um, that's what I'm going to do. Um, the next time I get a chance um, to do it, in, in this video, it'll just be the next scene. I'm going to try and set it up again. I'm going to try using just the flash to see how much coverage I can get uh, without the mono lights. And then I'll try using the monolights with a softbox and see if I can keep the effect, kind of reduce the spillage a bit. Um, and we'll go from there and see where we end up. All right, so here we are back in the studio. Um, there's the light setup that I had before, about in the same place. And I took some test shots. As you can see, um, they were right, the people on Reddit who were advising me. And um, it looks like the umbrellas were washing everything out because when I don't have umbrellas and I just have this light, I get almost full coverage on my background, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted. And when I go from full power to half power, it actually becomes even a deeper red, even though it's a white background. So score. So what I wanted to do to try it out now is use a soft box instead of an umbrella. And let's see. I'm starting out with the umbrella, I mean the softbox on full power, and uh, we'll take a look and see what we can do and if we can make it work. All right. All right, so um, that was my second session going along with it. And it looks like we proved that um, my thought process was correct and the people who were helping me on Reddit were correct. Um, the umbrellas were throwing light everywhere and that was basically washing out the light. 
I had to take a series of shots where I moved further and further away from the background and I was able to get something pretty close to, um, to what I wanted. Uh, and of course, like they show you in all the video tutorials for photography, the background went, even though it was a pure white um, background that I had, it went from white to gray as I moved my light further and further away. So what can I do? Well, in the studio that I have, being my basement, which is pretty narrow and so and low ceilings, I'm probably gonna have to limit my use of this effect. Um, at least if I'm the subject, because there's too much back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If I'm doing someone else, then um, it's a lot easier to kind of adjust myself back and forth and zoom in and out and kind of get the right framing. But I do like uh, the results I got in terms of teaching me a lot about what I wanted to get. Um, another thing I'd like to try in the future is see if I have a black background or if I have a gray background, will that kind of help ameliorate the issue so I don't have to be so far away. And finally, um, one other thing that people suggested that I just didn't have the time to set up were to use some gobos or some flags. And gobos and flags are basically ways of directing your light and ensuring it doesn't go everywhere. So it could be, or actually you could also use a grid. I don't happen to own any grids for my soft boxes, but a grid kind of makes the light go straight forward. So that's one thing that would work. Um, a um, gobo would be any kind of you know, black wall that would block the light from going back. Um, and a flag is basically taking a gobo, but instead of putting it some random place, you're just attaching gaffer's tape or something to the side of your flash to kind of help direct it forward. You know, it's kind of like a one-sided barn door. And I guess that's another thing I could use, barn doors, kind of direct the light, you know, keep it from bouncing off the ceiling, keep it from bouncing to the back. And I could try that. So there's a lot of possibilities to try. But um, I was pretty happy as a... I heard about this effect and I want to try it type of thing with the results that I got. So there you go. And I hope this is useful for you if you're trying to do something similar in your photography. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.